With the news of medications for weight loss, and weight loss is a constant topic of conversation these days, it seems that it's just inevitable that we're all going to struggle with our weight at some point or another. However, is it possible that exercise can play a pivotal role in preventing and reversing obesity? Let's find out today. Welcome to the Building Lifelong Athletes Podcast. Thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. If we haven't met before, I'm Jordan Renicki. I'm a double board certified physician in sports and family medicine. And the goal of this podcast is to help keep you active and healthy for life through actionable evidence and form education. And today we're talking all about exercise as medicine for obesity. We've kind of been working through this exercise as medicine series. And if you want to go back, there's different episodes all about exercise as medicine using as a specific treatment for certain conditions. And today we're talking about weight, obesity, and overweight. So let's get started. And so first let's talk about why we care, right? So why do we care about exercise and obesity? Well, it matters because obesity and overweight matters, specifically body composition. It's very, very important. And I'm going to get out there right away and say that having obesity is not healthy or ideal. I know that some people on the internet will say, Hey, like we should celebrate and appreciate all sizes. And I'm not saying you can't have body positivity, meaning I don't want you to have a negative self-perception, but I think we are absolutely, you know, kidding ourselves. If we say that, Hey, is totally ideal to have obesity. Can you have obesity and be metabolically healthy? Yes, you can. So people say that healthy at any size, like, Hey, you can be healthy at any size you can, but in my purvey on the literature, it seems like it's going to be for a certain period of time, meaning that eventually it's going to catch up to you and it will lead to other metabolic associated illnesses like type two diabetes, heart disease, cancer, depression, all these things that can be associated with obesity can catch up to you. So I'm not attacking anybody who struggles with weight or obesity far from it. I want to be an ally for those people say, Hey, like we can do this. There are things we can do to change. We can work on things. We can do medication, lifestyle, all those things. I'm not saying this is not an attack on a person. This isn't you know, the same way. I would never, we're not attacking someone who has hypertension, right? Saying, Oh, like hypertension's fine. And we seem to do it. No, like we understand that's a risk factor. Hypertension, high blood pressure is a risk factor for things like cardiovascular disease. So therefore we want to control that risk factor in the same fashion, obesity, is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease and a lot of other things. And so we want to work on that and treat it like a risk factor. So we are not attacking the person who has that. We are attacking the medical condition. So I want to just first and foremost say that we can separate those two things. This, you know, no one ever says like that person is hypertensive, like obviously in the medical community you might, but you know, we never define someone as that. And that's the problem. I think today is someone say hey, that obese person, like that person has obesity is kind of the, the, the vernacular I tend to use saying, Hey, they have this condition that they struggle with. It doesn't define them. doesn't make them who they are, but they have that. And we can't pretend that it's not a risk factor because bad things are going to happen. If we don't do that, we have to address risk factors and attack it from there. So that's kind of where I'm coming from in my mindset that I, yes, having obesity is a risk factor for a lot of things. And I'm not going to ignore that. I'm not going to just push under and say, Hey, because it's an uncomfortable thing to talk about that. We're not going to talk about it. We will talk about it. We'll talk about it in a considerate fashion. You know, we can ask patients, Hey, is it okay if we talk about your weight today? If someone has no desire whatsoever to talk about their weight and that's fine, I'm not going to, you know, break down any walls and say, Hey, we got to do this, but it's important. And I wouldn't be talking about it if it wasn't important. It's one of our big necessary nines in terms of body composition. It's very important. And just the data is so overwhelming that we can't pretend it doesn't matter what the reality people want to be. The actual reality is that it is an issue. And so I've belabored that enough and it's, it, it's not going away. This problem is not going away. 20% of the world population will be obese by 2030 and 38% will be overweight at least already. And so, you know, looking at 38% and 20%, that's 58%. We're already hovering around 50, 51% of general public having overweight over obesity. So it's not going away and it's going to be even worse as we continue to age and as societies continue to advance as well and they adapt our Western way of working and eating and doing all the things that will continue to have it. And it, it really affects a lot of people, you know, in the U S about 147 billion are spent on obesity in the United States, which is about 9% of the national budget. So that's in terms of healthcare expenditures, 147 billion, 9% of our national budget is being used to treat obesity related illnesses. And these are preventable things. And so that's why we're talking about, that's why it's so important. So the first question I want to talk about is, can we prevent weight gain with exercise? And like most things with exercise and medicine, it's kind of tricky. It's, it seems like some data says, yeah, we can do it. Others say no. So it's kind of mixed results. And that's pretty much what we expect. There's some data like that saying, Hey, if you just hit the physical activity guidelines, which are 150 minutes a week uh, or 10,000 steps, kind of one of those two metrics that maybe we'll do it. But other studies that I was looking at show that maybe those numbers need to be higher to like 300 minutes per week, which would be significantly higher, double what the physical activity guidelines recommend. So not sure. And also may depend on the intensity that you're exercising. It's possible that if you work out harder, you may be able to work out for less time. That's pretty standard. It's kind of built into the guidelines as well, right? The physical activity guidelines recommend 150 minutes of moderate activity or 75 of vigorous. So it's already built in understanding that, Hey, you work out harder, that will have better benefits. 
And we do consistently see an inverse relationship between exercise intensity and odds of weight gain, meaning the more vigorous the workout, the decreased odds of putting on weight. But it doesn't look like it's slam dunk. And also light intensity may not be the sweet spot for that too. You know, when we talk about activity, we talk about moderate or vigorous, but light is like just very general walking. And it doesn't seem to be like light intensity actually prevents weight gain at all. And so that's kind of like the one takeaway from this is like, if you're just doing very casual walking, that doesn't seem to be a great predictor. Obviously everyone's different in this area, but in the literature it doesn't seem to be a great predictor of stopping weight gain. Walking didn't show a change in like that in weight or BMI until maybe that 10,000 step threshold. And so they were kind of were thinking, okay, well, how does that, how does that compute Jordan? You just told me walking doesn't do it, but then it maybe does. Well, once again, it goes into the next thing I want to talk about is dose. The dose also matters. So if you're just kind of, yeah, I did a, you know, a 10 minute walk, a very easy one at night. Hey, that's great. Better than nothing. But that's very different from, Hey, I got 10,000 steps in today, which is a lot of walking. So the intensity we talked about matters, but then also the dose. One study that I was looking at, looked at no exercise groups, uh, groups that were below the recommendations at recommendations or above recommendations. So kind of these different categories categories of, Hey, are you meeting these guidelines or going above them? And those who were above recommendations were much less likely to prevent a weight gain of two kilograms. That's kind of the threshold for like a significant weight gain, which is around five ish pounds. And they routinely showed that those who do more exercise had a lower chance of developing overweight or obesity. And when they kind of punch the numbers, they seem to say that, Hey, people around that 150 to 300 minutes per week is kind of the sweet spot. And that's what the physical activity recommend recommendations are. And so that is not as slam dunk meaning, Hey, Will I not be able to gain weight if I just follow that? No, that's obviously if you're doing the physical activity guidelines, but then you're eating 6,000 calories a day, like, I'm sorry, like that's not, the math isn't going to add up, but overall in general, there is a chance that if you exercise and the more exercise you do and the more intense you do, like we've talked about for most things here, that you're probably gonna have better outcomes in terms of keep. The next question I want to address is what is the best exercise for weight loss? I did a Google search on this and holy cow. It was scary. There's lots and lots of results of people confidently telling you that this is the one way to do it. And spoiler alert, there's no one way to do it. There's not one good answer on the best exercise for weight loss. I think a lot of times most people will think of, hey, when I exercise, it'll burn more calories. And so I need to do the most, you know, the biggest exercise that burns the most amount of calories. But it's not really that easy because one, our body actually adapts to exercise and we don't burn as much as we're thinking. You know, when people are at the gym and they say, hey, I did this air climber, I burned 1200 calories today. Like odds are you burn nowhere close to that. It was very different. So our body does adapt to exercise. And even some studies that I saw looked at that we only lose about 40% of the expected weight based on calories burned. Meaning, hey, if I, my diet is here locked in at this fixed amount of calories and then I exercise this much, I should be in this much of a deficit and I should lose whatever. And we, they only lost 40% of the expected weight. So our body burns different amount of calories and adapts to exercise. And also this is tricky to understand like what is the best exercise is because no one person has the exact same like thoughts of, Hey, this is what I want to do. Cause if, if you have this perfect exercise, right? Hey, it is resistance training. And someone's like, I'm never going to do that. Well, then that's not the perfect or best exercise for weight loss. That's just not how it's going to work. We want someone to follow it. And most studies that I looked at here, they looked at combined exercise and diet changes, not just exercise. So it's very hard to say this is it. However, Overall, in terms of best exercise, if I had to recommend, combined exercise seems to have a better improvement in reducing total fat mass than other exercise protocols, meaning combined resistance training and cardiovascular training. There are also maybe some better recomposition in the body, meaning you may not lose quite as much quote unquote weight, but you may have a change in fat percentage, which is ideal. And at the end of the day, if you had to tell me, hey, Jordan, you can either take a five pound weight loss of just weight loss, or you can do a three pound weight loss. And we know that we're maintaining muscle mass and more body fat for that. And I would say I'd probably take the three, three pound, uh, quite honestly, I'm knowing what's happened as opposed to that. All things considered, obviously when we lose weight, that's a whole different discussion of how much we have to go. But the best thing that you can do for weight loss is activity that you enjoy and consistently do it. And if I had to tease apart a little bit further, I'd say, Hey, I want you to combine resistance and aerobic training. And the best one you can do is the one you can do day in and day out. So if I'm, someone says, Hey, well, Jordan, what about high intensity interval training? They say that the burn, you know, the afterburn lasts for days and days, and none of that really pans out over the long term. You know, they show these cool studies of they did this study, and yeah, for the next 72 hours, they showed this or that. And, but once again, we step back, like weight loss is not a game of 72 hours. Weight loss is a game of 72 weeks, that's, or, or in longer even. And so I want to look at what are the best strategies to get you to lose weight and maintain your body weight or whatever it is for long term. And that's being consistent, doing the things that you enjoy. And if possible, doing resistance training and cardiovascular training. Like that's really it. That's really it. And in there, yeah, we can kind of tweak on things. Okay, for cardiovascular, how much should I be doing? for high intensity, like VO2 max stuff versus zone two versus aerobic. Anyway, we can 
tease those details down. But if we're not even in that ballpark yet, where we're doing both resistance training and cardiovascular training, start there. That's what it, but there's no one activity that is going to be magic for it. It's going to be a whole lifestyle thing, right? We're changing our diet. We're changing exercise. It's a lifestyle thing. There's lots going on. So there is no one best exercise for weight loss. I'll say that right now. And so maybe you're hearing this and be like, well, Jordan, I've tried losing weight and I can't do it. And I've given up and like, does exercise, does it benefit any other ways than just weight loss? And absolutely. The answer is it doesn't matter if you take from this podcast, you say, Hey, like if you take one thing away, it's that exercise is good for you at any stage of your weight loss, weight gain, weight maintenance, whatever journey exercise is good for you. Exercise is for you. I'm looking at you and talking to you through this podcast. If you were debating, Hey, should I exercise? Yes. The answer is yes. Exercise will be good for you. Overall, it seems to decrease the prevalence of metabolic syndromes in those with obesity, meaning, hey, um, metabolic syndrome is a combination of a bunch of different things by definition, but metabolic associated diseases delaying the progression of those things. So when you're exercising, you're possibly delaying the progression of these diseases by exercising. So there's still lots of value to that, even if we don't have any weight loss. So what I mean by that is, let's say type 2 diabetes, right? Maybe you are eventually going to get type diabetes. If you exercise, maybe we can delay that. And the longer we have something, the worse it is, right? You know, when we think of risk factors, if you have hypertension or diabetes, the longer you have that, the more time it has to act on your body and cause detrimental effects. So if we can delay that even just by exercising, but not losing weight. That's a very good thing. You can also get more fit while staying at the same weight. You can still improve your VO2 max or your max oxygen uptake, which is kind of a measure of cardiorespiratory fitness, and you can increase your muscle strength while still having obesity. You know, VO2 max and studies like that, they improve that through aerobic and combined training, meaning aerobic and then aerobic and resistance, but not just resistance training. So you kind of have to do some sort of cardio to get better at cardio, at least shocking news of the day. And you can improve your strength through resistance training that they saw in studies as well with those who had obesity. So you can see lots of stuff and you'll see improvements in other metrics. You'll see improvements in your blood sugars, right? Because exercise exercise um, improves blood sugars through an insulin independent pathway. So just exercising will help your blood sugars and your overall, you know, stability of the blood sugars. It'll help your lipid profile also will help with your blood pressure. So all these things can happen just by exercise in and of itself. So even if you lose no weight, even if, you know, the scale is not changing, first of all, you may be having body composition changes, meaning the scale is not indicating the change in composition, meaning, hey, maybe you're losing fat but gaining muscle or something like that. So that's not the whole story. The weight in the, the weight on the scale is not the whole story. I know that body composition plays an important role in that. But even if like nothing is getting better, like nothing at all internally, like physiologically, you're still having improvements. And so it's so worth it to exercise. It's still worth it to exercise, even if you're not losing any weight. Another question I want to answer is, well, let's say you've lost some weight. Can I keep that weight off just by exercising, right? How effective is exercise for weight maintenance? And overall, it's kind of mixed here as well. Less than 20% of people who lose 10% of body weight. So let's take, looking at studies, people lose 10% of body weight. That's kind of like a significant number, meaning, hey, okay, 10% is pretty agreed upon. That's pretty substantial, right? You know, let's say you're a 200 pound person, that's 20 pounds. That is pretty substantial. And, but less than 20% of those people who are able to lose that are able to keep it off in one year. So we're talking about, 20%, like less than 20%. So one in five are able to keep it off at one year. That doesn't even talk about further on. So overall, and this is just like overall numbers, it is very hard to lose weight and then keep that weight off. There's probably a whole nother podcast series to talk about why that is in terms of your body's homeostasis, its drive for a natural weight, hormones, all that fun stuff. But rest assured, it's very complicated and your body does a very good job of re getting you back to that way that you were previously. So, but it's very hard. It's very hard to lose weight and keep it off. But for those people who do lose that, what are like the common themes here? And overall, the, the World Health Organization recommends double the regular physical activity guidelines for those who are trying to keep weight off. So meaning 300 minutes of moderate or 150 vigorous to keep the weight off. That's really hard to do. We have a very small percentage of people meeting the regular physical activity guidelines, right? The 150 minutes of moderate or 75 vigorous, very few people. And now they're saying to keep weight off, you need to do double that. That's, a, that's really hard to do. And only about 5% of the population reaches, like I said, the regular guidelines. So to think double above that, that's really, really challenging. And overall, we just don't have definitive data that um, exercise in and of itself helps keep weight off, that just exercise by itself. So it's really hard to like isolate, isolate those out. Like I've said before, there's lots of stuff going on, right? There's nutrition, there's lifestyle, there's other habits. So lots of going on, but the overall trend, this is kind of the takeaway from the data that I saw. I kind of looked at a couple research articles here, reading a couple of reviews. And one, one way they kind of said it was, is really cool. I thought that they said those who can maintain a program of regular exercise are more likely to keep the weight off. So those who can maintain a program of exercise are more likely to keep the weight off. And I think that's like the general theme for this is there's no set threshold as to how much you need to do per day to keep weight off. I think those people tended to average about an hour of exercise per day 
And so that's kind of what we're saying. Oh, around that area, that'll probably come out to double the physical activity guidelines, right? Because those are usually like 30 minutes, five days a week. So double that. And that's either an hour for five days a week. or I mean, so that's generally kind of consistent with that. But it's really not set in, set in stone. It's not very clear. But those people who did do this, who did lose their weight and were able to keep it off, exercise seemed to play a big role. And so that's like my general recommendation. Someone's like, hey, how much do I need to do to keep my weight off? And there's going to be no number, right? And this goes back to what we mentioned previously in the podcast is people respond differently to exercise, right? You're burning X amount of calories. Another person may burn Y with a certain set of exercise. So it's giving a blanket term for most people that this is what you're going to need to do to keep weight off. That's just not very helpful. It may serve as a kind of help, a guideline, right? Kind of a, a guide to help you understand, okay, I'll start around here, understanding that, hey, it's going to be a substantial amount. And I think that's beneficial saying, hey, this is a general range that it's going to be a decent amount, just so we're not like, oh, I can work out 15 minutes away a day. It's going to be fine. But it kind of tempers expectations, but it does show the important you know, how important it is to have exercise as a part of a lifestyle changes. And I'm always going to talk about that, right? So if you want to keep your weight off, I, I would never say in my recommendations for my patients or my clients or whatever, I'd say, I would never say, Hey, uh, once you lose weight, like just exercise, that's the only thing. It's like, no, clearly what got us here. It probably wasn't just exercise, right? It was lifestyle changes. It was stress reduction. It was diet, all those things, and then maintain those. And so for me, the patients that I see that have the biggest improvements in weight loss and are able to keep it off. It really comes down to a lifestyle shift. And I know people talk about, you know, making small changes here and there. Those can be beneficial. Absolutely. But usually it's a small change here and then a small change here. And then eventually that person has a different frame of mind, right? They have a different perspective on who they are as a person in terms of, Hey, I, I do these healthy behaviors. Now this is part of my identity. So it's like this shift eventually happens to, I think once, once you see that for me, that's like when I know someone's gonna be successful is when they shift their thoughts into, I can't do that into this is who I am. And so it's a lot more complicated than just doing one thing. And so data like this and looking at research questions like that are very beneficial, but it's kind of myopic meaning, Hey, we're looking at one thing and it's much more holistic looking back and say, Hey, what are all the lifestyle factors that have led to this improvement and how do we maintain those things? And so Exercise will always play an important part of that, right? I sound like the the commercials, like exercise is an important part of this healthy breakfast, but it is exercising can be a very, very important part of a healthy lifestyle. And it can be helpful for you at any stage, whether you are trying to lose weight, you're trying to maintain, you're trying to gain weight in a healthy way, whatever it is, exercise is going to be there along the way. It's going to be your good friend to kind of continue to be part of the process, make it part of your day-to-day -day process. So that's really it at the end here. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, please sign up for my mailing list where I'll kind of notify you whenever I put out new important stuff or changes in you know, my thinking or whatnot. I'll never spam you. I promise. I hate spam so, so much. Um, but this does conclude the episode. Thanks so much for watching. Now get off your phone and get outside. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you next time.